What's this? A letter for me. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports Through the Mail Thursdays. Today I'm going to share with you three recent returns that I got back in the mail from some players that signed for me, and I'm going to tell you about their profiles in baseball. So we're going to jump right into this first one. And the first one is postmarked from Atlanta, Georgia, and it is from the Atlanta Braves. I sent this care of the Braves, and it is coach of the Atlanta Braves, former player slash former manager, Ron Washington, on three of three, completing the dual coach card with him and Bob Apodaca that I've shown on this channel before. So let me tell you about Ron Washington and his career in baseball. Ron Washington was born in New Orleans, Louisiana, where he attended high school at John McDonough High School in New Orleans. He also attended college in Bradenton, Florida for a brief period of time. However, he decided to sign with the Kansas City Royals as a free agent. In 1971, he made his rookie league debut for the Kansas City Royals, appearing in 38 games for the Royals and actually posting a respectable 291 batting average and stealing 13 bases for the Royals that year. The following year, 1972, he'd appear in just 76 games for the Royals in high A. His batting average would dip down, but he would steal 42 bases that year. 1973, he would appear in 85 games. In 1974, he would appear in 109 games as a starter, primarily, and he would steal 51 bases in 1974 for the Orioles minor league affiliate. He would then be traded to the Los Angeles Dodgers organization for a minor leaguer and he would go to play for the Dodgers double-A affiliate appearing in 115 games and posting a 294 batting average while stealing 14 bases. He got moved up to AAA in 1977 and he split time between AA and AAA appearing in 124 games and he posted a sparkling 309 batting average for the Dodgers AAA and AA affiliates that year stealing 25 bases. Well, he was rewarded in 1977 at the end of the season with September call-ups and he got to appear in 10 games making his major league debut with the Los Angeles Dodgers. In his 10 games, he actually posted a 368 batting average in limited time for the Dodgers that year. Well, the following year in 1978, he would only appear in 31 games for the Dodgers AAA affiliate that year. I'm assuming there was some uh, personal reasons or an injury precluded him from playing much in 1978. He would see limited time in 1979 and then Right before the season was about to start in 1980, the Dodgers would trade him to the Minnesota Twins. For the Twins, they assigned him to AAA, where he posted a 287 batting average in 114 games for the Twins AAA affiliate that year. Despite those decent numbers, he did not get called up to the majors, and instead, in 1981, he spent most of the bulk of the year with the Twins AAA affiliate, but did get to appear in 28 games for the Twins in a utility role. By 1982, the Twins gave Ron his opportunity to shine, and he responded batting 271 in 119 games in 1982 for the Twins in the majors. Despite this decent success, he was relegated to just 99 games the following year in 1983 in kind of like a platoon backup role. He would follow this trend in 1984, 85, 86 for the Twins organization until they would finally release him from his contract right before the 1987 season. He would sign on with the Baltimore Orioles in 1987 and he would appear in 26 games for the Orioles in a backup role as a backup infielder. He would spend the bulk of the season in AAA for them. After the season concluded with Baltimore, he would then sign with the Cleveland Indians as a backup utility player appearing in 69 games. The following year, in 1989, he would sign with the Astros. He would appear in seven games for the Astros uh, at the Major League level in 1989, but he would appear in 92 games in AAA for the Astros. Still trying to keep the dream alive, Ron signed in 1990 with the Texas Rangers. And the Rangers did not bring him up to the Major League level. 
He instead finished the year appearing in 101 games for the Rangers AAA affiliate in 1990. Well, after his career ended in 1990 as a player, he was involved in the senior leagues, as you can see, and he also got into coaching almost immediately. Well, Ron would work his way up the ladder through the coaching ranks, coaching for various organizations, uh, starting with the New York Mets, obviously, and then landing with the Oakland A's. Well, if you guys know your movie Moneyball, uh, Ron is actually one of the coaches that is portrayed in the movie Moneyball. He would hold various infield and you know positional coaching positions through 2006 with the A's. Uh, he was credited with working with you know Eric Chavez and Miguel Tejada in their careers, you know helping them out. And on November 6, 2006, it was announced that Ron Washington would be the next manager of the Texas Rangers. Washington would coach from 2007 to 2014 with the Texas Rangers. Uh, after, you know, during his time with Texas, he would help lead them to a World Series or an American League Championship, I guess would be the best way to put it. After his time with the Rangers, he did a brief stint coaching overseas in Japan. Uh, he did come back to the United States and he coached another couple seasons uh, back with the Oakland A's from 2015 to 16. And then, after 2016, he signed with the Atlanta Braves to be a coach, and he's been a coach on the Atlanta Braves staff since 2017, which he was part of the 2021 Atlanta Braves World Series Championship team. So, I did send these care of um, the Atlanta Braves, and Mr. Washington was nice enough to oblige and sign them for me. Very, very happy to get them back, especially on a couple senior league cards, and finishing off that dual card with... Uh, the pitching coach Bob Apodaca on that card. So we'll move on to the next one. All right, so this next one, uh, I've had often on success with this individual throughout his, I guess, career in baseball. And I'm talking about former Padres slash Cardinals slash Orioles slash Giant Terry Kennedy on 404. And I chose to send these four because they were cheap cards and I didn't want to risk losing my all-time Orioles card or something like that. And I'm like one for three when it comes to writing Terry Kennedy. I've, you know, tried him throughout the years many times. You know, I don't know if they got lost in the mail. I don't know if I sent them to a bad address. I don't know if, you know, the, the address was, you know, invalid that I sent it to and they just went in the garbage. But... I was a little hesitant after going 0 for 2 with Mr. Kennedy to send him, uh, you know, some more cards that I didn't want to lose. So I just went out to my garage. I found some commons and I just I just threw them in an envelope. And I'm like, well, if I lose them, I'm done writing Terry Kennedy. Well, luckily for me, he uh, did uh, sign them and he sent them back. Uh, so let me tell you about Terry Kennedy and his long career in baseball as well. Terry Kennedy was born in Euclid, Ohio. He's the son of former Cleveland Indians slash Chicago White Sox slash etc. Um, infielder Bob Kennedy. So uh, after being born in Ohio, uh, the Kennedys relocated to Arizona and Terry attended high school in Arizona and later would sign on to go to Florida State University in Tallahassee, Florida. The St. Louis Cardinals would use their first round pick in the 1977 draft, selecting Terry sixth overall. The six foot three left-handed hitting catcher immediately was placed in the Cardinals organization on the fast track to the majors. And in his first year with the Cardinals, uh, he split time between rookie ball and single A, posting a 312 batting average. The following year, in 1978, he would split time between Double A and Triple A, appearing in 133 games, posting a 309 batting average. Well, this would get him a September call-up on September 4th, 1978, and Terry would finish out the year on the Cardinals on the 40-man roster, appearing in 10 games. Well, the following year, in 1979, uh, Terry got a hard look in spring training, and despite you know, having some solid numbers the previous year, the Cardinals decided he needed a little more development time, 
and sent him down to AAA. Well, he appeared in 84 games in AAA that year and posted a two ninety three batting average and cracked 13 home runs. Well, the Cardinals were forced to kind of find a spot for him on the roster, and he appeared in 33 games for the Cardinals that year, batting two eighty four. Well, the next year in 1980, uh, he was kind of placed on a platoon split role where he appeared in 84 games for the Cardinals, posting a two fifty four batting average. Not having a spot for him uh, going into the 1981 season, the Cardinals decided to ship him to the San Diego Padres. The Padres immediately were happy to take him on as they gave up uh, Gene Tennis in the trade to go to the Cardinals, and Terry Kennedy responded, appearing in 101 games, batting 301 his first year with the Padres and making his first All Star game appearance. The following year, in 1982, the job was his, and he would bat 295 and hit 21 homers in 1982. Despite having these huge numbers in 1982, he did not make the All-Star team for the Padres. Instead, in 1983, he did make the All-Star team. However, his uh, home run numbers did drop down to 17, and he batted 284. So go figure. The best year he had, he didn't make the All-Star team. And the next year, he did make the All-Star team. Uh, in 1984, he appeared in 148 games for the club, hitting 14 home runs. In 1985, he would make his third All-Star appearance, appearing in 143 games for the Padres that year. In 1986, he would appear in 141 games for the Padres that year, posting a 264 batting average. Well, after the 1986 season concluded, he was shipped to the Baltimore Orioles for pitcher Storm Davis. Well, Terry responded really well his first year in Baltimore, making his fourth All-Star team, posting a 250 batting average and hitting 18 home runs. The following year, 1988, Terry would just appear in 85 games for the Orioles. And after the 1988 season, which was not one of the best seasons, <laughs> to say the least, for the Orioles, the Orioles traded him in 1989 to the San Francisco Giants. Terry would become an integral part of the 89 Giants as they would march to the World Series, you know, famously known as the Earthquake Series, appearing in 125 games as the backstop for the Giants that year. The next year, 1990, Terry would appear in 107 games for the Giants, and in 1991, he would be delegated to just 69 games for the Giants that year, and then he would hang up the cleats as a professional player in baseball. When it was all said and done, Terry Kennedy had a lifetime 264 batting average, 113 home runs, and 628 runs batted in, a four-time All-Star, and a Silver Slugger Award in 1983. After his playing days, Kenny managed, coached, and instructed in the minor league affiliates for the St. Louis Cardinals, the Montreal Expos, the Seattle Mariners, the Chicago Cubs, the Los Angeles Dodgers, and, of course, the San Diego Padres as well as spending some time in independent league baseball as well. During his ten years as manager in the minor leagues, he was twice named manager of the year in the minor leagues, once as uh, the manager of the Iowa Cubs, who finished in first place in 1998 with Kerry Wood on their pitching staff. After our managing career, I don't know if he still is doing this, but it says on his Wikipedia page that he is working as a scout for the Chicago Cubs. So. Very happy to add Mr. Kennedy to my collection. I've been trying to get him <laughs> for years to sign for me through the mail. Uh, I saw him one time in my younger days in the 1990s and got him to sign some cards for me. Again, they were just common run-of-the-mill junk ball era cards. And uh, now that he's retired, I might consider sending some uh, more important cards to me, like the all-time Orioles card or the all-time you know, Padres card to him. So, thank you, Mr. Kennedy. I appreciate you signing those cards for me. All right, so I am very super excited to share this last one with you. This one is postmarked from Florida. Uh, it is from the Rhode Island great, you know, one of the greatest players ever to come out of the state of Rhode Island. And this is former number one pick, Bill Allman, on one, two, a third, 
as well as a mat. And finally, lo and behold, if you remember this, I'm going to link it up in there, here in the corner, right here. I have finally completed the rookie shortstops card by all four players. Tommy McMillan, Mark Wagner, Mickey Klutz, and now Bill Allman. So let me tell you about Bill Allman and his career in baseball. Bill Allman, a Warwick, Rhode Island native, was originally drafted by the San Diego Padres in the 11th round of the 1971 draft. Allman decided not to sign out of high school and instead chose to go to Brown University where he played baseball and also received his Ivy League education. Well, this paid off because not only did he get his education from a renowned institution, but he also became the College Baseball Player of the Year as a junior in 1974, batting 350. Well, after posting up these numbers in college, you know, being the College Player of the Year, the San Diego Padres made Bill Allman the number one pick in the draft that year. Allman signed professionally immediately, and he appeared in 39 games, both at AA and AAA, for the Padres that year. Well, because the Padres were so high on Bill Allman, they decided to call him up. And on September 2nd, 1974, Allman made his first appearance in the Major Leagues. Alma would stick around for 16 games in 1974, and he actually posted a 316 batting average while manning shortstop for the Padres that year. The Padres felt he needed more seasoning, so in 1975 they put him down to AAA, where he appeared in 144 games, and unfortunately his batting average dipped down to just 228. Despite this, he appeared in 16 games in 1975, but in 1976 he would bounce back in triple A, posting a 291 batting average for the club. 1976, he would appear in 14 games uh, uh, in the major leagues, but in 1977, the job was all but his, where he posted a 261 batting average, stole 20 bases, appearing in 155 games. In 1978, he appeared in 138 games, posting a 252 batting average and stealing 17 bases. The following year, in 1979, he would appear in just 100 games, and his batting average would dip down to just 227. After the end of the 1979 season, the Padres decided to cut ties with Bill, and they sent him packing to the Montreal Expos. Bill would just spend 18 games with the Expos in the major leagues before they decided to release him, and then he would finish out the year with the New York Mets in 1980. The Mets would not renew his contract, and he would sign with the Chicago White Sox in the offseason, and the White Sox would give the former first-round pick pretty much the shortstop position where he appeared in 111 games, posting a 256 batting average. After the 82 season, he was granted free agency again and then signed with the Oakland A's. Oakland again utilized him as the starting shortstop primarily in 1983, and in 1984 he was appeared in just 106 games for Oakland. After the 84 season, he was granted free agency again, and he moved across the country back to the East Coast and signed with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Well, at the age of 32, Bill was pr primarily used as a backup infielder, appearing in 88 games that first year in Pittsburgh. The following year, in 1986, he would appear in 102 games, but in 1987, he would start the year with Pittsburgh before they would trade him back for his second stint with the New York Mets. He would finish out the year with the Mets, again being a utility infielder, and right before the 1988 season began, the Mets shipped him to the Philadelphia Phillies. Well, he only stuck around through June of 1988 with the Phillies when Allman was released from his contract. At 35 years old, Allman was done playing in the major leagues. He compiled a 15-year major league career, and he posted a lifetime 254 batting average. He only hit 36 home runs total in his career as a major leaguer, 
and his power numbers just never really produced, nor did his uh, batting average numbers. I mean, he he batted 350 in college, but as a major leaguer, he batted a lifetime 254. So, uh, was the number one consensus overall pick, you know, in that draft? Was he the worst number one overall pick in the history of baseball? No, absolutely not. You know, there are guys that were drafted number one overall, and I've talked about them a little bit on my channel, that never made it to the major leagues. This guy, at least, had a 15-year major league career. Well, Bill was selected to be inducted into the uh, Collegiate Baseball Hall of Fame, and he most recently received those accolades. You know, the Hall of Fame is located in uh, Nebraska, and uh, Bill is one of those guys that goes down as, you know, number one overall pick, which is something since the draft has been installed in baseball in the 1960s, there's not too many people that can say, I was number one in that draft year. So that's an elite group, uh, definitely to be in. I want to thank Bill or Mr. Allman for signing my cards and finally finishing that rookie card off for me. I want to thank Mr. Kennedy as well for signing my cards. I'm going to probably send a few more his way here pretty shortly in the future. I also want to thank Mr. Washington for signing my uh, senior league cards as well as finishing off this dual player card as well. I look forward to your comments below and as always, happy collecting!